Hello Internet and welcome to another episode of Battle Spot Live. We are back on Battle Spot, obviously, and uh, we're going to do some games with uh, a slightly modified team. Um, I'm sure you'll recognise it. It's almost the same team that we've been using the, the last couple of weeks. But uh, you know, I hope you don't mind. I've been a little bit busy. Um, you know, I haven't really been able to make um, any new teams that I like, unfortunately. Um, but I have changed this team a little bit. Um, I've changed the Hariyama a little bit, and the Gigalith is a little bit more of an interesting Gigalith than your normal Gigalith, I guess. So, um, you know, we'll see how it goes. But, um, you know, there is some, some method behind the madness, as uh, we find someone from Japan with a, with a higher rating. So, um, hopefully we can steal some of their points. Unfortunately, uh, <laughs> one of the biggest problems for this team is Smurgle, because we can't stop him just putting us to sleep so that's not good that's really not good so what do we think we do here then um i think i want to go with a ranguru and i think um hmm like i want to try and get hariyama switching in turn one to activate its flame orb and i can then fake out in trick room that's what i'm thinking so I would definitely want Hariyama in the back. Do I want to lead with Metagross? Or do I want to lead with something else? Um, hmm, I want... I don't know, I suppose I want to lead with something that... That he doesn't want to spore. So, I think he will have to spore... I mean, if he even has spore, I mean, but he probably does, doesn't he? Um, yeah, I will go with Metagross, I, I think, I think, with Hariyama in the back, and let's go with Gigalith in this one, uh, just because uh, it is still slower than all of his Pokemon, um, and it hits a few more of his things a little bit better than, um, than Torkoal does. Although, I suppose, I don't know, two eruptions in the sun is still better than, like, two rock slides, I guess, from, um, you know, on, on his Snorlax, that's what I'm thinking. So, I don't know, um, one, kind of wanted to bring the Gigalith, though, just to sort of show you what it is and what it does and everything. He doesn't even lead with the, the Smurgle, too, which is quite interesting. Um, worst case scenario here, then, is if he goes for a Tectonic Rage into the Metagross and roars my Orangaroo, because then, <laughs> you know, that is just, you know... I can't stop that. There's no way that I can stop that with this lead. So, even if I protect the Oranguru, um, a roar will just, you know, roar me out into something else. So, I have to just go for a Trick Room here and an explosion, I guess, and see how it works out. Poor Metagross. It always goes down turn one. Is this Gengar coming in? Oh, no, it's not. It's coming in. So, he's probably targeting the um, Metagross then, because he doesn't want... Oh, maybe not. Maybe he's roaring. Okay. Well, this is one of those situations where a really bad lead turns into a really good situation for us. So, uh, yeah, he must have been roaring. Or, either that or his Arcanine is just, you know, hasn't got much speed invested into it. So, which is, you know, fair enough as well. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'll definitely take that. The problem now is that um, he's got his Snorlax in, in Trick Room. It didn't show a berry, though, did it? No berries there. Um, Garchomp is... Um, well, Gar Garchomp is always a problem, isn't it? Um, but I think I will put in the Gigalith, just because, um, in case this Snorlax has got um, Zed Belly Drum, I don't want it healing itself up and um, putting itself into a really threatening position. Um, and it could be banded, I suppose, as well. So, I'm not going to mess around with it. I don't want it all going for like a, a pulverizing pancake or something into the... Um, into the Hariyama, but actually it's a Smurgle that, that comes out, which does make things a little bit tricky for me, because it, it could potentially fake out, it could do all sorts of stuff, it could wide guard, um, yeah, so this just got a little bit scary now. Um, as you can see, we're still in a clear air, um, this Gigalith does not have the powers of the Sandstream, um, it's a, a very sturdy Gigalith though, which um, is quite nice. What is the Snorlax going to do then? What's the Snor the, the Smurgle going to do? Um, I mean, Rock Slide is quite a safe move, I suppose. Um, like, Rock Slide, Psyshock into the Smurgle should knock it out, but 
Um, but, I don't know, I'm just fearing the Zed. I'm really fearing the Zed belly drum. Kind of expecting, oh, okay. I was kind of expecting a, um, a fake out there, but... And, yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of frustrating. I was considering going for a Continental Crush. Um, this isn't so bad. Ooh, Giga Impact. Well, this is an interesting team. And the Ranguru survives as well. Um, okay, so it probably is Banded then. I'm going to guess that is Banded. Moody, Accuracy Rose, which doesn't really do anything. Defense Fell, which is good. Okay, so because of Defense Fell, um, you know... Both of my moves are definitely going to knock it out. Um, so I'm going to Psy Shock again into the Smurgle. Um, and... Do you think a Heavy Slam would knock out the Snorlax from here? Because it would be a little bit of a waste to uh, use the Continental Crush on it. But I think I've got to. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, I like, If he goes for a Follow Me here, which he possibly could do, um, at least I'll still knock out the Smurgle. Um... It was Giga Impact, so the Snorlax can't actually move this turn, can it? So, what am I fearing, actually? So, I'm just going to go for a for a side shock into the Smurgle and another Rock Slide, actually. If he wide guards again, good for him. Um, yeah. So, okay. I don't mind that really because the Smurgle goes down this turn. Um, I could have used the Continental Crush on his Snorlax. Um, kind of wanted to save it though. Um, yeah, I knew that he couldn't move, and we have got uh, another turn of Trick Room left. And, you know, we know, well, we don't, actually, we don't know, but uh, we're, <laughs> I'm suspecting that, that Gigalith is Choice Banded. Not Gigalith, Snorlax is Choice Banded, uh, looking at the amount of damage that it did to the, um, the, uh, the thingy there. So, what have we got then? We've got Hariyama and Gigalith left. And we've got two turns of Trick Room left. So I could, again, go for a Rock Slide. Yeah. I could go for a Rock Slide. I mean, obviously that does risk the um, miss. The 10% miss on Snorlax. And that would not be good. Um, I've got Wide Guard on this Gigalith as well. But he has not used any Zed moves yet. So uh, there's obviously the threat of that. I am, I'm sturdy though. So I would survive a Continental Crush. You know what, I'm going to be a bit cheeky. I'm going to um, hope that we don't miss the Rock Slide, and I'm going to try and flinch this Garchomp, because we all like flinching things, don't we? Okay, well, <laughs> thankfully that was the... Uh... <laughs> uh, what am I doing? I'm, uh, I'm making... I'm like, okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm playing a bit risky, just for, the, just for the fun of it, to be honest, but... Um... Yeah, I mean, I really should have gone for the Continental Crush, even the last turn, I suppose. Um, Garchomp does actually flinch too, which is wonderful. Um, Garchomp might even um, protect this turn, so I'm not going to use my Z move on it. I'm just going to instruct Rock Slide again into it, uh, just to be cheeky. I don't want to Heavy Slam because I don't want to break my Sturdy. Yeah, he does protect here. Um, he's probably going to Earthquake, though. Um, it would kind of be fun to see... The, um, the, um, Continental Crush into, not Con the, um, Tectonic Rage into, uh, Gigalith, though, to, um, uh, you know, see the Sturdy activate, but, uh, you know, unfortunately, no. So, he will be going for an Earthquake here, um, so, I could actually go for a Wide Guard, I mean, if I'm really predicting him to go for an Earthquake, I could Wide Guard with Gigalith, and, get, and then get a Trick Room up again, but, do I really need to do that? I don't think I do, do I? Um, because if I go for um, a Trick Room and he goes for an Earthquake, I get a Tectonic a Continental Crush on his Garchomp, and I have still got a full health um, Hariyama in the back as well, which will survive an attack and um, be able to knock it out with a close combat as well. So, okay, so this is the turn I'm going to make the, um, the slightly safer, I guess, move. Continental Crush, yeah, into the Garchomp. Um, Part of me does want to wide guard though, but just because I can see the earthquake coming, yeah, it's fairly obvious. So I could have wide guarded there and got the trick room up, and um, then had some fun trying to, um, you know, rock slide flinch him with loads of uh, instructed rock slides. But um, nah, it doesn't really matter because we have got the Hariyama in the back, and um, it will be able to win. 
I suppose, I suppose, um, I mean, and this was sort of in the back of my mind as well, if he has got the um, Tectonic Rage and he gets a critical hit on my Hariyama uh, to knock it out, then uh, he could potentially win maybe, depending on how much damage this does to Garchomp and how much um, a following um, Heavy Slam would do to it. I don't think a Heavy Slam would knock it out from there, so... We're, we're, we're actually not out of the woods just yet. We could still lose this. We actually could still lose this. So, I am going to close combat. I'm not going to fake out, just because I don't want the um, rough skin damage. And Heavy Slam, I guess. I'm not, again, not going for a wide guard, because if he does go for the uh, Tectonic Rage into the Hariyama, and it does critical hit and knock me out, then I do want to be... Um, you know, doing some damage to it at least, you know, but I think we should be okay. I think it just comes down to if it gets a critical hit or not, which I'm hoping it doesn't because there are plenty of turns in this game where, um, I mean, it was <laughs> where I could have played things maybe a bit better, but um, I think we'll be okay. I do think we'll be okay. Yeah, so here it comes. I mean, it comes down to if this critical hit occurs, I guess. Because Hariyama should be surviving this. Yeah, I mean, if <laughs> if he critical hits me now, then I'm actually going to be kicking myself quite a bit for not going for the wide guard on the very obvious earthquake to knock out the Oranguru. So, come on, Hariyama. You've got lots of uh, padding, haven't you? It does have lots of padding. And uh, thankfully survives. <laughs> wow, that was going down a little bit, <laughs> a little, little bit further down than I thought it would. Actually, knocks itself out to the rough skin there. So uh, I'm glad that I've still got Giglith around. Okay, so you know maybe I'll maybe I'll try and um, and calm down a little bit. Maybe I'll try and play the name uh, the next game a, a little bit more sensibly, a little bit uh, better, I suppose. But uh, I don't know. I wanted to have some fun with Giglith. I'm not used to using Giglith. These are like some of the first games that I'm actually doing on Battle Spot with Giglith. So. Uh, um, I'm enjoying them. I just want to see what it can do and, and how it works and everything. But yeah, Continental Crush didn't do that much damage to the Garchomp, unfortunately. But um, that's, I suppose, that's what you get for uh, one hitting it with a, with a resistant move. <coughs> but also, if uh, my voice will continue to uh, <coughs> to um, to work, um, a lot of people who have Continental Crush on the Gigalith have Stone Edge on it as well, just sort of forgetting the fact that, you know, Stone Edge is a pretty poor move otherwise. So, um, but, you know, obviously it does give the extra damage. You know, Stone Edge, uh, I don't like Stone Edge, I don't like Hydro Pump, I don't like any of these 80% or lower moves. Um, on, like, something like Feromosa with um, Focus Blast, like I was using with um, the Fighting Gem on it to, um, you know, do the all-out pummeling. And that's all right, because you kind of expect Feromosa to go down quite quickly, because it's so frail. Gigalith sits around quite a bit longer, so if you use your Continental Crush on it, then you basically got a Stone Edge, and, you know, that's not not the best move to have. And if you have uh, Rock Slide alongside that as well, then you're restricting your options. Not that Gigalith has got too many options in the first place anyway, but, um, you know, that's a, a different story. I'm just waffling on a bit now, aren't I? So, this guy, um, he's got an interesting team, actually. Very interesting team with um, the Komoo, uh, Mandibuzz. Even though Marcus won that regional with Mandibuzz, I think Mandibuzz is, is still actually quite underrated for what it is. I think Mandibuzz is so, so, so bulky. I think it's a really good Pokemon. Um, but if I get Trickroom up here, then I think I'm okay. So, Oranguru leading and... Who else? I think we'll go Metagross again. I don't want to go with Hariyama because he's got the Tapu Lele down there. I think we do want um, Torkoal and either Hariyama or Gigalith, I guess. But we'll go with Gigalith here just because um, we can hopefully hit that Mandibus for a massive chunk of damage with Gigalith. So, um, yeah, let's uh, let's let's get our, our concentration hap, um, hat on. Not going to wear as a hat. That'll keep me concentrated. Them. Nothing. <laughs> Don't have any hats to hand, unfortunately. Sorry to disappoint you. Okay, so Mandu was Arcanine. I did expect the Arcanine to lead. Um, if okay, so I'm exploding. I don't mind exploding here because if he 
targets my Orangaroo with his Arcanine, I'm going to explode, and it probably won't knock out the Mandibuzz, actually. Maybe the Mandibuzz, mm, like an Inferno Overdrive and a Foul Play, maybe that would knock out Orangaroo. Um, don't think so, but it might do. Um, if he targets the Metagross, which is the more likely option, um, then Metagross goes down, Mandibuzz might taunt the Orangaroo, I suppose. I've got Mental Herb on it, and then I will get a free switch into my Gigalith, which... Um, can hit both of these for a lot of damage. So I'm just going to explode here and, um, and Trick Room. And hopefully this will go according to plan. Mandibuzz, um, can it learn Whirlwind? I suppose that would be uh, a more effective way of stopping Trick Room. So it actually goes for a close combat, which tells me he's probably doubling into the Oranguru, but I'm not sure that looks like a lot of damage too, actually. Wow. So... I mean, he's definitely losing his Arcanine now from the, uh, from the defense drop, but I don't think this will knock out the Mandibuzz. Hopefully the Mandibuzz doesn't have Whirlwind or, or uh, any way of, of preventing the Trick Room, but I'm pretty sure it won't. Or well, hoping it won't, anyway. And there's a berry. Was that a Citrus Berry? Because, yeah, I don't think that was quite 25%, was it? And Foul Play, good, which... Um, Aranguru should survive. Yeah, just survive with with um, some ease there. So now I've got some options. Uh, unfortunately, I can't see his team um, to sort of see which one I want out, Torko or, or Giggle, because that Mana Buzz is just below 50%, and it's not had like one of them seeds that um, increases special offense as well. So Eruption would be pretty good here. But Gigalith obviously can rock slide and do a lot of work too. So... Do we want to give Gigalith some time, or I'm, I'm more comfortable going with Torkoal, but do we want to um, give Gigalith some, some action here? Um, he didn't, oh he did have some weather, didn't he? He had the, um, the thingy. He did have the thingy, didn't he? Okay, so I'm going to put the, I'm going to put the Gigalith out. Um, he's got the Komo as well, hasn't he? That's something that just sort of popped into mind there. So... Putting Gigalith out here, yeah, means that I can Rock Slide and um, maybe Psy Shock into the combo for super effective damage there. Because obviously, you know, it's, it resists Rock. Will a Rock Slide knock the Mandibus out, though? I mean, I'm kind of thinking it will do, but it might not, necessarily. I mean, I could instruct Rock Slide to try and get some cheeky flinches, which is obviously cheeky, too. Um, Gigalith... He might have noticed by now, my Gigalith hasn't got Sandstream, so he might have deduced my Gigalith is sturdy as well. Um, but, what do we think? Do we think, I mean, it comes down to if Rock Slide is going to knock out his Mandibus. If I think it does, then I can I can um, Psy Shock, but I'm not sure it will actually. So I'm actually going to go for an Instruct Rock Slide play here, just because I'm not 100% Rock Slide will knock out his Mandibus. I think it will. But if it doesn't, and and he gets to foul play and all out pummeling my Gigalith, then Gigalith won't be sticking around any, around anymore. So it does. So I should have gone for the side shock here, I suppose. But uh, doing this does mean I have got, if I hit, two chances to flinch him, which is lovely. Yep, yeah, we hit. So we've got two two chances to flinch here. Does it move? Of course it moves, and it goes, actually goes for a clanging scales as well, so uh, maybe he does realise that I am sturdy, and um, I mean, it reduces the defence. Um, that is one stage, isn't it, that the defence fell. Um, which means it might even be in range of a Continental Crush, perhaps. I mean, definitely Eruption on, on Continental Crush. He might have Tapu Lele as well, as his last Pokemon. Oh, it's Vanillux, so um, he's got his Hail, which is not good. But otherwise, Vanillox can't do anything to Torkoal. So, he's lost his Arcanine, he's lost his Mandibuzz. Um, I, th I guess if I'd known my calculations a little bit better that turn, um, I could have gone for a Slice Shock onto the Comoro, which would have put it in range of, um, definitely in range of a Continental Crush. Um, but, but, I mean, that Comoro has got to be feeling pretty threatened right now, hasn't it? So, I'm just going to go for an Eruption, which we're not in the sun, but it will still knock out the Vanillox. And,. Go for a Continental Crush into the combo. Uh, Continental Crush, uh, power 140. Um, with Stone Age, it's 180, so there's the difference. 140 with Rock Slide. 
um, with same type goes to 210 because resisted is 105 um, which um, I'm not sure how heavy Komo is heavy slime potentially is up to 120 but Komo looks like something that would probably weigh a fair amount so um, yeah, as long as this eruption does knock out the Vanillux, I think we should be okay. Fingers crossed. Um, and it does, yeah. So no Focus Ash on there, um, like uh, you see so commonly on Ninetales. So this will do a, a decent chunk. I mean, remember, he is a minus one defense. Uh, so this is a base, well, you know, effectively 105 going into it. Um, quartered is, you know, just marginally over um, 25. So, uh, yeah, 26 point very little um, power this will do to it so uh, just a, uh, a a small amount of damage it will do here but yeah mm, a bit more than I was expecting actually um, but the hail will sort of chip at it as well and have we got one turn of trick room left or have we got two turns of trick room left I'm not too sure let's have a look We have got two turns of Trick Room left, yeah, good. Which means I can quite nicely just go for an Eruption and now I will go for a Heavy Slam into the uh, into the combo and the combination of these will definitely knock it out. So, Eruption. Will Eruption knock it out from here? I don't think it will. It is single target, but it's always nice to see these sort of calculations, isn't it? We are not in the sun either. It actually does knock it out, okay, even though it's resisted. Okay, so combo goes down and um, Gigalith... Sturdy giggler, you know you good old. I need to, I need to stop saying words that uh, that uh, sound a bit funny. I was going to say good old sturdy, you know rigid giggler, um, but that just sounds a bit strange, doesn't it? You know taking us through two wins in this episode. So thank you very much for watching this, guys. Please ignore my silly words that come out of my mouth. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, you know please like and share, and um, you know help me get my channel out there a bit more and everything, and um, tell me to stop being silly in the comments. Um, thank you very much, and goodbye for now.